Hey everybody, welcome back to Dead Car Rescue. I got the camera flipped around backwards. You can see the stickers on my back window on my fair lane. That's what happens when you use your phone and you trying to do a close up and you want to see what you're looking like and make sure you don't have no nose hair sticking out. It doesn't work for me, but it, anyway, a lot of my videos have the steering wheel on the passenger side. That's because somebody didn't know what they was doing, didn't switch it around when they got through filming themselves, looking for nose hair. In this video, it will be turned around the correct way. So uh, just put up with this sign in my back window just for a second. Today, we're gonna change the rear end chunk in this 1967 Ford Fairlane. It's whining like a little kid that got the wrong toy for Christmas and I'm, I'm tired of it. Uh, I wanna be able to hear the radio I don't have. And someday I'm gonna have put in. But we're gonna change it. I'm gonna show you how simple it is. There's my little advertisement I got. I put that on my back window of my pickup truck and my car and um, on the back of my big truck, on the back of the sleeper. I've got a few people that says, hey, I saw you out on Interstate 81 in your big truck. Uh, I pulled you up, I like your channel, stuff like that, you know. So they, they even subscribed. So uh, there's my fair lane, by the way. It is drivable. Uh, it's got a six cylinder motor in it. A lot of you, if you've watched my video already, you watched me clear coat it and you watch me do the interior, and you watch me keep that motor. That's a little six-cylinder 200, automatic. It came out in this car, and it's sweet. So I'm gonna leave it in there for right now. This is what I'm gonna put in. It's a 302 out of a Ford pickup. You got a C6 transmission. The transmission that's in the car is a C4, and uh, I was hoping that the bell housing on a C4 six cylinder would be the same as a C4 V8 or a C6 V8, but uh, nope, it's not. So I'm gonna have to pull the motor and the transmission out of this one when I get ready to do that. Now, what was we talking about? Oh yeah, rear ends. This, is the, is the chunk. It's called a chunk because you take the bolts out around the thing, pull the dry shaft, pull the axles out, and this whole piece comes out in one, one piece. It's got the ring gear and the pinion, the bearings. Uh, you can look up in there. You can see splines. There's splines up in there. Hopefully my splines on my 67 chunk when I pull it out will be the same as those. I'm gonna find out by pulling one axle out first. I'm gonna stick it down in this hole and make sure the splines line up. If they don't, I'm gonna to have to think about what am I gonna do? Change the change the uh, uh, spider gear kind of, no? No, I have to change this. If, if I got the wrong splines, well, I'll have to change the carrier, I guess that's what you call that, that carries the ring gear. We're gonna clean this thing up a little bit and uh, get some of the spider webs off of it. So let's do it to it.
Sam's a truck driver, by the way. He, he drives for FedEx, so he's got, I'm sorry, Sam. He drives for UPS. I've got friends that drive for FedEx too. But uh, I get them mixed up. They're just like, they're not super truckers like me. They're, they're wannabes. Now, if you're a, whoops, if you're a FedEx or UPS driver, I was talking about Sam. I wasn't talking about you guys. You guys are probably professionals. Okay. I need a cigarette now. That'll go good with this brake cleaner, I guess. I don't know if it burns anymore or not. We'll uh, let that dry off. Uh, might help it just a little bit here. In case there's any spiders in it, it's still alive. <laughs> If there were any spiders in it, they have been evicted. That cleaned up pretty good, didn't it? I checked it to see if it had any play and it has very little play. I think that one, I think that one will be just fine as far as no more whining noise. But, okay, there you go. Now let's get that rear end out of that thing now. Okay. We're going to back off on the brake shoes a little bit. I've got them adjusted up. It's quicker to do that, I guess, than 
pull a brake spring loose or something like that, and uh, try to save some time. Okay. Okay, I'm thinking it's kind of hung up out here. Because I loosened up plenty enough. Take it out of gear. Make sure it's in neutral so you can turn the rear end gears and uh, line the hose up so you can take the bolt out or the four bolts that hold the axle in. remember what size it was so I got two different sockets 9 16 and a half inch and it's a 9 16 I knew that not really four bolts out, this axle should just slide right out. But it's been in there like, uh, I don't know how long. Probably since the car was new, I don't know. We're going to just uh, take a chance and pull on it. It's not going to come out, but I'm going to pull on it anyway. Might get lucky, might not. And it might have to beat it out. You got, they got this tool like to pull dents with, and I've got one of those, and I need to make me a little thing to put on it to go around a lug nut, and then you screw the lug nut, I mean the lug stud, you screw the nut up on that, and you bang it, and it pulls the axle out. Like that ain't gonna do it. So we're not gonna do that though. That's too easy. We're going to pick around on it with this little hammer. Then hit the brake shoes and knock some of the, you know, brake shoe stuff off. Meanwhile, two hours later. Okay, this is what I came up with. This is my dent puller. I made this bracket you see right here out of uh, scrap iron. And I've got a lug nut. 
which I'm not gonna use on this car. This is just the extra one, because I got the fancy chrome ones. As soon as it cools off, I'm gonna screw that onto this lug nut. I'll screw it on here so I won't lose it. And then I'm gonna bang on that baby. And we'll see how it goes. Okay, kids. Here we go. Now what I want you to do, if you ever make one of these, screw this lug nut all the way up to where the threads are all the way inside that lug nut. Because if you just start it, maybe turn Tighten it a couple of threads. When you go to bang on that thing, bam, it's gonna pull the threads off because you don't have very many threads holding. Same on this end with this with this dent puller. Uh, you gotta screw it all the way up, get all the threads you can on this and this, these two lug nuts. And then you can bang on it and it should come right off. You might have to change it, go up here, bang, a little bit it takes some time to take us off you know a couple a minute but but just uh swap around okay now if that axle comes out this way i'm gonna be a happy man but if it don't i'm probably gonna kick the camera over or something i don't know here we go we'll see how it goes now you see how this works right bam bam so all right, drum roll. Well, that's not the outcome I had in mind. But, let's see what we can do here. It could be the backing plate, I don't know. You know, the backing plate, actually it could hold it in there if it was jammed. But I don't think so. Huh. In Arkansas, we say, dang, that sucker's in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to pull at the top and I'm just gonna turn it. Oh, I thought about that. I can turn it and it'll still do the same thing as if I took it loose and put it up here. <laughs> yeah, well. I know a thing or two about a thing or two. See? Save me from taking all that stuff off with that lug nut. And it's actually pulling from the top part of the bearing. I think the bearing, I don't know. Bearing might turn, I don't know how it is. We're gonna try it. ain't coming out. Why does nothing ever work the way I, I want it to? You ever have that problem? Something so simple can turn into something so crazy hard to get off. It's kind of like taking, just say those four bolts. You get down to the last bolt, get three of them out, you get down to the last one, going to turn. You're going to have to get back there and hold it with something. It's always that way except for this time. 
All right. Look at there. What do you think about that, folks? Hey, my tool held up, didn't it? That's a good thing. Ta-da! You know, that bearing looks like it's not in that good of shape. I might want to go ahead and change these bearings. Nah. I'll take it off first and kind of limber it up a little bit. Because this car ain't going to be drove it much anyway. And it is tight. Looks like it wasn't getting a lot of oil either. Of course, I didn't drive it that much. I could, I probably need to change them. We'll see. Let's see, if I turn that to the top, the bearing was turning too. No, the, the hey, the bearing was staying it was jammed in there so when I brought it up here it actually helped me pull this out from the top part so okay we learned something we learned something that does help when you change positions when you're banging that thing out of there so now you know and now I know I mean I'm 68 years old I probably changed, I don't know, I probably pulled axles out of a Ford, nine inch, uh, probably, hey, this is the first time. That's correct, this is the first time I've ever tore into a nine inch Ford, but I've tore into an eight inch Ford before. You know, so they're similar, they're the same thing really. It's just these are heavier duty. But you'd say, hey, gee, Steve, I thought you uh, had been working on cars a long time. I, I have. The doggone Ford made these rear ends so good, I never had to do, had to go into them. So, like, don't blame me, blame Ford. They had to made them so good, I've been working on them all the time. And what, it, what a teenage boy does when he has a problem back in the, say, I'm gonna say early 70s. When he has a problem like rear ends going out, he puts sawdust in it and mixes it with the grease, you know? And then he takes it and trades it off. What does the sawdust do? It keeps the rear end from whining. It's an old trick they used to use years ago in the, old, in the used car business. Um, Jim and his wife, Dorothy, went to the car lot, bought a car. Hey, they drove it, it was fine. After about two weeks, they noticed a rear end noise. So what they do, they go back and they tell the guy, and the guy says, hey, that car's, you've, you've had it two weeks, you didn't say nothing about it. Anything could go out, so I'm, you know, don't blame me for it. But, there you go, see that back and plate? This little thing right here is a back and plate, and those four bolts hold it on. And actually what that does, the rear end has a flange on it that these holes match up. That holds that axle in that car, and it keeps, keeps the axle from coming out. Okay, here's the axle. We're gonna, I'm gonna stick it in there and see if the splines are the same. 
See the splines? You got so many splines, you're supposed to count them. But I just want to see if it'll work. If it don't, we'll back up and do something else. Nope, they're not going to work. So, we're going to have to change the carrier. This thing right here. That's where the splines are. No, hold on a minute. I think the splines are in the spider gears. Okay, I'm not sure. Until I tear it down. Like I say, I've never been in a Ford before. And the splines are in the spider gear. And not in this. This just holds them. So all we gotta do is tear it apart. I'll, I'll probably put the other, let's see. Now, well, let's see how I'm gonna do this. I don't know how I'm gonna do it yet. I'm gonna leave the pinion in this housing and I'm going to try to change this out of the old chunk into this one and just put the ring gear on it and then bolt it all back up the same. And we'll have my brother Flash to come over. He told me if I needed help, you adjust this back and forward to make it line up and make it not whine. See, I don't have any play in it right now. But if I just stuck it in there, I might have this much play. Click, 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 click. And uh, you adjust this to make the clicks not as bad. Like click, 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 click. Is that Does that make any damn sense to you? Oh, Lordy. See, you stick a Ford, you stick a Ford product on me, and I'm acting like, like a 16-year-old teenager just done this for the first time in his life. Oh, well, I'm going back into my younger age anyway. They say by the time I by the time I hit 80, I'll be sucking my thumb again. Not know my name. Not know who's taking care of me. But anyway. Enough about that. Oh, Lord. Okay, everybody. Welcome back this morning. It's uh, Saturday morning. Got the rear end out, or the chunk. There's the chunk that come out of it, and you can see it's war. Pretty good right there. I'm hoping that's what my noise is. Everything turns real good on it. And uh, of course, there's the one we worked on yesterday, cleaned up, had spider webs in it. We got the idea we're gonna change, we're gonna take this all out Take this carrier out. Take the carrier out of this one, with these four bolts. And we're gonna put this ring gear, or this ring gear, on this carrier. And we're gonna put this carrier back in this rear end instead of using this carrier. So uh, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna see how it goes. And guess who's here? Mr. Flash. Smoking a cigarette. Welcome back. Glad you could be here today. I, I got on the phone and called him yesterday. Glad to be here. Said, uh, I need your help. Of course, what I really need is his pretty face on my videos. I think the women like him, I don't know. I seem to do better when Flash is working with me. People, so uh, People tell me I need a haircut, but uh, I 
I got a great grandson who's got hair all the way down here past his elbow. He's got a mullet. Mine will be that way in about another year. Yeah. But anyway, that's what we got going today, so join us. Okay, we ran into an issue. I don't think Flash has ever been into one of these either. The two carriers are different. This carrier and that carrier are different. Uh, we're not finishing with the car today on this video. So uh, we're gonna just cut it right here and uh, do a part one and a part two on this, okay? Uh, Y'all be patient with me. Uh, I don't have the money to uh, just stay home and uh, do these videos. Uh, I don't have that kind of money. I've got to go to work. Things happen. I'm supposed to be driving this thing today. But I'm not, and I need to get it out of my shop. So I have bought a, a chunk with 32, uh, 28 splines. I got to go get it before I leave out. And it's a 410 gear. I know that's that's a little much for this little six cylinder, but that little motor right over there is gonna go down in this thing this winter. So we're gonna put that motor in there and then 410 gear will be fine. Uh, I, I don't plan on driving 100 mile an hour down the highway. So anyway, let's do that and do a part one to part two on this, this uh, rear end change. And once we get that done, we'll go on to something else. I've already got the other something else out there on the trailer. And you're gonna be, you're gonna be uh, happy with what I got. So we're gonna do that. Until then, this is uh, Steve with Dead Car Rescue.